What's up everybody, Liam Clisham here, and we're not just doing one tutorial today, but five quick tips inside of Redshift. So we're gonna cover everything from using a standard Cinema 4D noise to how to do proper object ID multi-pass and take it inside Nuke and work with it and a couple other things thrown in in between that I have found help my workflow. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Quick tip number one. So sometimes you're working in the shader graph and you want to be able to preview things and you have to drag the node connections around and it gets really tedious and a pain in the butt. So let's say we want to have this pink cube with some noise on the reflection. If I drag that here, you can see we get the noise, but it's kind of hard to see it too. And maybe I want to preview it so I can add it into the diffuse here, but then I have to disconnect it again and then wait for it to update and then connect it again if I make any changes, or I can pipe it right into the output here. But doing all this dragging around really sucks. So there's actually a keyboard shortcut you can set up. So what I'm gonna do is reconnect this and actually use my keyboard shortcut. And you can see just by hitting keys really quickly, switching um, makes it a lot faster. So how do we do that? Well, under tools, you'll see create texture node, connect node to output, or connect node to viewport. So what I've been using is connect node to output, which is this right here. To do that, you can search in your commander by hitting shift C and doing customize. You'll see customize menus, commands, and palettes. We're gonna do commands. And this one is connect node to output. So if we do a search for connect node, it comes up right here. And then you can start customize it with whatever you want. So I've done mine as control uh, tilde or uh, whatever that accent mark is, uh, but it's actually tilde. Um, but I could change it to, let's say, control shift uh, four. So now it's control shift four, and I hit assign and we'll assign it to control shift four. But I like it as control tilde, even though it puts that weird accent thing. And that's that. So now when you go back in, select this, hit control, whatever you assign it to, you can jump back and forth really quickly. Quick tip number two, you'll see we still have this noise in here from quick tip number one. And you know, it's it's fine for noise, but sometimes it's just tedious to work with. Like, I, I don't know what I'm gonna get when I adjust this or this. And you know, it's a lot of just trial and error. And I'm really familiar with the C4D noise, so I'd much rather use that. So if we do a search for C4D, we get this little shader node and it allows us to use textures. So let's bring in our noise and I want to pipe it into here. Oh, nope, doesn't work. I want to pipe it into here. Nope, doesn't work. So a lot of people think, man, I can't use any of the built-in noises or shaders and presets that come with Cinema 4D. And that's just wrong. You actually have to pipe it into a regular Redshift texture node before it will work. So we'll go like that, go down to general image, texture zero, and bring it over to diffuse. And we'll use our handy dandy hotkey to sync it to output too. And then we can go in here and start messing around and choose whatever we want. So I'm gonna do electric. I kind of like how electric looks and set it to 350 maybe, or maybe 50 if I want it really small. And if I reconnect it here, boom. So you can totally use C4D noises inside of Redshift. Um, you can use a gradient if you want. There's that, you can use some of these things down here. So let's go to surfaces, galaxy, boom, galaxy if you want it. So let's see, Venus, maybe Venus doesn't work. Am I wrong? I guess Venus doesn't work, but a lot of these do work. So marble I know should work, or maybe it's just not updating. Huh, I guess marble doesn't work. I know checkerboard does, cause I just used it, there we go. Um, so you have to play around and see which ones work and don't work as I just showed here. Some of them do and some of them don't. Uh, Earth works fine. I think brick works fine. Yeah. So some of these definitely work. Some of them aren't going to work and you can try them out. But, uh, you know, quick little trick is that you just take the C4D shader, plug it into an actual redshift texture, and then pipe it in wherever you want. Quick tip number three, there's a rumor floating around that you can't have custom libraries 
for Redshift, um, but that's just not true. You can totally save your stuff. So you can see here, I'm working on a new metal texture pack that I've saved. And I'm gonna go into just the regular content browser, go to file, new preset library, and we'll just call it RSC4D. And boom, whoop, boom, just like that, you can save your presets. So if I create a material here, and let's say it's just a plastic that I use all the time. So we'll go to plastic and make it this cool pink, whatever, just to make sure it works. We'll throw it on there, hit refresh, cool, it's working. Throw it in there and we get it. And you can totally set previews however you want, like create preview or if you set preview, you can go in and choose a preview image and do it all up just like you can with everything else. And it saves out into your libraries like every other library. Quick tip number four. So a lot of people don't realize that you can do A-B testing really quickly right in your render view. So here's another preview of this metal pack that I'm putting together. And if I hit this plus sign, it'll save a snapshot right there. But let's say I wanna preview this one throw that on, let it do its render really quickly and let it get to a nice point. And it's about 15, 20% rendered. I'll just hit that plus sign. And now you can do AB testing, jump back and forth without having to re-render stuff all over again. It's really great. Say if you had noise in here, like I do, and you want to adjust it and see where it updates, you can just take a snapshot, then re-render it and compare and contrast. So if you wanna look dev really quickly, definitely use these snapshots for A-B testing. And quick tip number five, how the hell do object ID passes actually work? So this is a big shout out to Chad Ashley because he showed me this and I wanna pass it on to you. So we've got our three cubes and each one has an object ID tag on it. So one, make sure this one is two, and we'll make sure this one is three, perfect. And you'll see we've got bucket rendering going. So if I drop down here, hit object ID, it looks like nothing's working, but it actually is. And if we render it out and try and open it in Photoshop, it looks like nothing's working either, but it actually is. And I'll show you what's happening in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift R to render this out, and we're gonna jump into Fusion. All right, inside Fusion, we're gonna bring in our EXR that I rendered out. So go to Import, footage, you'll see here it is, AOV tut, and this is a deep EXR or multi-layer EXR. And I'm gonna hit one here and two for this one there and just hit fit really quickly. And there's a plugin for Photoshop that will let you view these layers too. Um, I just didn't have it installed when I did a computer refresh and didn't realize that I hadn't. And so um, if you watched the last stream, I was saying that these weren't showing up, but they actually are. So we've got our AOV here um, and you'll see it looks just like our render. And if we go to format, you'll see we get all these channel options and including object ID. We'll go down here and do object buffer zero dot alpha. And at the moment, it seems like nothing happened, but what we need to do is turn on our sub view. So I'm gonna set this to color inspector and then hit V on the keyboard and you'll see we get this inspector with RGB, A values, and a little object ID inspector too. So here comes the cool thing. If I go over this one, object ID one appears. If I go over here, object ID two appears. Over here, object ID three. And this should work in any compositor that you're working with. Um, so if you have Photoshop and you're working with that uh, exr.io plugin, or if you're in After Effects or Nuke or whatever. So this is how you get your object ID passes and you can do some cool stuff. And again, big thanks to Chad Ashley for showing me this. So let's do, um, if you hit Shift C, we'll do color correction and bring this up. Whoop didn't want LUT cube, I want color correction. Color, there we go. Double tap that, make sure I get it. Put this in here. All right, get ready to have your minds blown. So the original is over here on the left and a color correct is gonna be here on the right. If I go into this little options tab right there and do use object, you can select one and it looks like nothing changed, but watch, oh, boom a red one. And if I copy and paste this, I'm gonna update it. 
and I'm going to make the next one green. Let's see, got to go in this tab, select object ID two. You can also pick whichever one you want to update. And that's how you start doing some really complex compositing with your object ID tags. And this is just color correction. Imagine everything else you can do too. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't been following along on social media, look down below at the links. You'll see that there's a couple Gumroad links because I've been releasing materials now. So this week I released a new ceramic material, which is kind of this gritty old art museum statue looking thing. And then I also released five leather materials and they're all completely procedural. You can go in and customize them however you want, um, but there's five base ones there to get you started and you can dissect them and see what I did to build them. And they're both only a dollar and it really helps me out by supporting making these tutorials and just, you know, not always having to work on freelance jobs, but I can maybe focus on this a little bit more. Plus, I really like interacting with you guys, so I like giving back things, and so uh, I made these packs for you. All right, if you have any questions, definitely find me on any of the links below through social media, my website, email, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, you know, reach out, let's chat, let's have a discussion, and we'll talk about whatever we should do in the live stream or what we should do for tutorials in the future. All right, guys, again, thank you so much for swinging by, and I'll talk to you soon.